covering the Bayou Glue District and the Galata area. So it's going to be really cool and I have Adrian with me today. In front of the camera. <laughs> In front of the camera. Can you believe it? He actually felt like coming out here and hanging out with us. I slept good last night. <laughs> Thank you for the honor. <laughs> so let's hang out guys. Let's go discover everything that this side of town has to offer. Let's do it. So the first stop that we decided to go towards is the famous Galata Tower. And there's a reason to our madness because in the Bayou Glue area, it's kind of like a, a hill. And so the Galata Tower is on top of that hill. So we're gonna knock that out first thing first <laughs> and go uphill and uh, try to keep our lungs intact. Try to keep up. And then from there, everything will be easy. It'll be downhill. <laughs> so, to you. Yeah, well, but that's kind of like where we're heading towards. Um, and to climb it, what we're gonna do is actually come to these famous steps, which were premiered in a good Bond movie, right? That is indeed correct, you guys. So we're gonna go feel like James Bond for a split second, at yes. least. Yeah. <laughs> get to it, everybody stops on the other side, and then it's not until you go around the tower, you see this little street uh, that I think is the continuation of the other one. Yeah. And it's just, uh, it's a lot better, especially if you're here around midday, the sun's blocking you, but the sun's actually uh, lighting the tower up, so that makes it very perfect backlighting. So. It really does, and you can have a coffee or whatever you want, because it is lined with coffee shops and restaurants, which I think it's really cool. Yeah. But I think we're gonna keep walking. What do you think? Yeah, let's go. Let's do it. district and honestly on the European side I have to say the Bayou Glue district is actually one of my favorites. Yeah, it's kind of like a mixture of Sultana Med and Katakoi where we are uh, yes. on the Asian side. So it's kind of kind of cool it's like kind of see the blend of both of them. Yeah I, you really do see it right? Yeah. Yeah so I, I mean I like it I think it's a good middle ground for those who are not comfortable uh, being completely on the Asian side but they also don't want to be in the middle of Sultana Med. Yeah so I think Bayou Glue seems like that's kind of the middle ground. Yeah or Karakoi. I'm also hard Yep. Things about that, but let's keep moving. Okay, so we have arrived to the most famous. 
Japanese shopping spree here in Istanbul and that is Ishkital and it is long. It is like I honestly thought it started at the end <laughs> uh, but it actually starts right uh, once you finish the Galata area so yeah I mean more shops for us. <laughs> No, but in all seriousness, guys, this street is really cool, especially at night because it all lights up. And this street is actually known for being a 24 7 street. Yeah, that's so that is actually pretty cool. Now, the last time that we were here, y'all, it was incredibly crowded. You could not even walk. No. I think it was a weekend too. So. It was a weekend. I mean, you could not take a step forward without bumping into somebody. Yeah. So that is, that's that's common here in the street whenever you're, you know, at the height of tourism. But we're going to continue to discover this area. find fish here candy tea I mean a belt if you need a belt yeah. so it, it you know this area really is very much like Katakoi except with a little bit more of a European feel to it yeah less crowded less crowded you know you can get your fake your fake Dior <laughs> so we're gonna continue to walk and yeah enjoy ourselves in the Nevisada area of Feyoglu and it really is super cool lots of restaurants I imagine this area it's honestly best at nighttime but again we do live in a different district right now so we're just gonna enjoy it during the daytime okay so we decided to go ahead and 
stop at one of the spots around here because the food is it. And then it was just like called to us when we passed by this pub. It's, uh, it's called the Beer House. Yeah. So, yeah, it's kind of it's quiet. So we like quiet pubs and bars and stuff. So uh, we noticed that this was kind of like off the beaten path yeah. on the same street. So we decided to stop, order a beer. They brought us like half a, half a liter each. I didn't expect it to be this big, y'all. Yeah. It's, uh, it's interesting. Yeah. But uh, I've seen this beer too more here in the two months we've been in uh, in Turkey. And I think it's like the local beer. Mm -hmm. And so I, I gave it a try for the first time. It's really good, actually. It really is. I wasn't expecting it to be this good. Now, I have tried another beer that's similar to it, <laughs> and, it's, and I tried it in Mexico, and it's Victoria, yeah. and that's actually pretty similar to this, except Victoria's not a malt. <laughs> no, no, this is very malty, and uh, the other one's a Pilsner, so. He knows yeah. his beers. I do know. <laughs> but yeah, this is really good, and uh, I, I'm enjoying it. Yeah. It's relaxing, I mean, hopefully we can finish this big old thing. <laughs> yeah. challenge accepted. Challenge accepted. Ching ching, my love. They actually do really good french fries here in Turkey. They're really good. And chicken strips. And chicken strips. Better than back at home. No. I have to give it to them. I really do. So, I'm sorry, but, you know, I just... Uh, we I, have to recognize it. Well, yeah, I recognize it. I see it. I'm sorry. Every yeah. restaurant we go to, we're like, wow. <laughs> All right, guys. We have officially left the bar. And I have to say, it got really crowded. We're back on Ishkital Street. Yeah, about an hour later after the, you know, drinking beer, it's like we come out and there's like twice as many people. Yes, it's surprisingly enough, or shockingly enough, this is still not packed. It's not. <laughs> uh, so we can still, we still have our space. Yes, this is will be considered lively. Yeah. Uh, but we're going down the street, I think it ends at uh, Taksim Square. I think it's a major landmark, so we're gonna kind of keep walking this way, see what else we can find uh, along the street. So. so let's go discover the rest of it. We've officially made 
headed to one of those neighborhoods and that is going to be the Sihangir neighborhood. Now, you guys know I'm probably butchering it. Out of all the languages I speak, Turkish is definitely not one of them. But this area, so I'm really surprised. So far, I'm really enjoying the vibe. It's definitely a mixture of the European, the Asian, the Bohemian, and I like it. <laughs> Let's keep checking this place out. While you're in the neighborhood of the Singhaikir, you cannot miss the Singhaikir Mosque. This was built in the 16th century and the unique thing about this mosque is that it's built on top of the hill here in uh, Beyagu and it has this great panoramic view of all of Istanbul from the Asia side to the European side. So this is a must before you leave this neighborhood, you have to come here. absolutely amazing I had to sit down and just take it all in and now we're coming down the rainbow stairs now if you've ever been on Instagram you know the stairs right here are Instagram famous and everybody that comes to Istanbul has to take a trip over here to take a picture yeah and I mean not to be mainstream but they are kind of cool and we are gonna take a picture <laughs> <laughs> Galata Port. Now this place right here is definitely bougie, nice, and everything in between. Now we are on our way to Karakoy, but this is an excellent way to cut through and get to Karakoy. Now it does come with awesome views of the Marmore, so we're gonna go have a little relaxing time just admiring the view. I was not expecting uh, this to be here. Not uh, at all. It's super nice. I mean, the mall area with all the shops the inside, bougie, everything. This side, it's super nice. Yeah, I mean, it's a, you can tell it's a little bit on the upscale, but if you want to come and have a really nice dinner or do some shopping and some high-end stores, this is definitely a place you can do it. Yes, but even if it's not within your budget, coming in here is completely free of charge. So it is still within your means to come in, sit down, and enjoy the view because that doesn't cost anything so take a stroll walking is free totally guys and to top it off i have to tell you all they have lavender 
beds, like yeah. literally. The walk-in pads have lavender beds with benches in front of them, so when you sit down, you get a huge, a little small hint of lavender. <laughs> Very bougie. Very bougie. Let's keep walking. Turkey will come to <laughs> So I got hungry. I couldn't wait till dinner. <laughs> so we decided to stop here at one of the food stands right up at the boardwalk. They have big potatoes and they have the Turkish cake. Yeah, so we're gonna get a Turkish package, I think. Yeah, they're actually making them like homemade over here on the, on the spot, so you can't get any more fresh than that. So. and everything and I have to say that it is a must visit when coming to Istanbul. What do you think? I know I definitely agree with that. If you are able to come, you know, and you're in the Sultanahmet area or the Asia side, this will be a combination of both and you'll definitely not regret coming over here and spending at least a day. Yeah, so. absolutely. And guys, with that said, I hope you enjoy this video. If you like to see more videos like this, please make sure that you subscribe like and don't forget to click that little bell now if you want to see more turkey videos make sure that you check out my turkey playlist because we will have plenty of videos right there and that is it for today we will see you guys on our next adventure bye